Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have an interesting identity. If we have two scalar functions, f and g, and we take the gradient of f, and then we take the gradient of g, which we're going to do over here, and then we find the cross product, which we'll do over here, and then we take the divergent of that result, it should always equal zero. So let's try that with this example right here. Let's first find the gradient of f and g. So the gradient means we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x and times i, the partial derivative with respect to y times j, and the partial derivative with respect to z in the k direction. So here we end up with 2x in the i direction, take the partial derivative with respect to y, that gives us plus 2y in the j direction, and there's no z's there, so plus 0 in the k direction. Do the same for the second scalar quantity right here, scalar function. The partial derivative with respect to x, well, that gives us y plus z in the i direction, plus the partial derivative with respect to y will give us x plus z in the j direction, plus the partial derivative with respect to z will give us x plus y, x plus y in the k direction. So now we have the gradient of f and the gradient of g. Now we find the cross product of those two. So then here we put in the x, y, and z components, x, y, and z components of the two gradients. So that gives us a 2x, a 2y, and a 0. Here we have a y plus z. We have an x plus z. And we have an x plus y. And when we take the cross product, we get the following. We get i times this times this minus this times this. Of course, with the 0, that makes it easy. So this will be 2xy plus 2y squared. And then we have minus j, the j component. So we have this times this minus this times this. Again, with the 0, the second term drops out. So we end up with 2x squared plus 2xy. And then plus the k component, and here we have this times this, which is 2x squared plus 2xz. And then minus this times this, which is 2y squared, and minus 2yz. So now we have the i, j, and k components of the product of the two gradients. So now we're going to take the divergence of that. Remember, when you take the divergence of a vector quantity, you take the partial with respect, with respect to x of the i component, the partial with respect to y with the j component, and the partial with respect to k of the, uh, or with respect to z of the k component. So now we're going to take the divergence of this cross product. So we're going to take the partial with respect to the partial derivative with respect to x of this quantity right here. There's no x here, so this becomes 2y plus the partial with respect to y of this quantity. Now be careful the negative sign here. So the partial with respect to y, that's 0, and the partial here with respect to y would be 2x, but we have the minus sign, so that would be, instead of a plus, a minus 2x. And then finally, the partial derivative of this component with respect to z. Notice these two components do not have a z in it, only these two components. So that gives us plus the partial just with respect to z, which is 2x, and then plus, actually minus, because of minus here, minus 2y. Oh, there we go, we don't need parentheses. And if we combine like terms, we have 2y minus 2y, which is 0, and a 2x minus 2x, which is 0, so this ends up being equal to 0 just as was predicted by the identity when we take the divergence of the cross product of the two gradients of two scalar functions, we should always get a zero as we did in this example. And that's how it works.